So Paul, we, we have these meteorites that have these chondrules, that have these elements, that have these chain reactions that gives us a really ridiculously accurate age. So how do we feed that in now to our model that we've talked about before of how the sun operates? Now we've talked about how we model the sun, how we have to make sure that everything is in balance, meet all these constraints, and we understand the nuclear physics. So we have pretty good models, we know they work today, and now we can put an age in and use them to work out how things are changing. Yep. So here's our model again. We have the core, which is undergoing the nuclear fusion, the yep. PP chain that we talked about earlier. That's right. And that's going to increase the amount of helium and decrease the amount of hydrogen. That's right. So it's turning that hydrogen into helium, essentially, through the chain reaction. That's right. Now, the outer layers won't. Yep. The composition we measure is the composition of the photosphere. Yep. And that all the helium that's created in this can't get out. Yes. So that's measuring the primordial composition of the star, that what it was made up with. The middle, there must be more. Yep. And we can calculate how much more and check that, that works with all our helio seismology and everything else. And yep. indeed it does. And what it means is that the middle has actually accumulated quite a bit more helium. Okay. So it might be, instead of 20% helium, it might be about 40% helium by now in the core. Okay. And so again, that's because on the outside what we measure, but that's not the stuff that has been turned into helium from these PPE chain reactions. Yes. And if you feed in the reactions, you can work out what's going to happen with the whole lifespan of the sun. So today, this is what we're essentially measuring. This yes, is what so we're about 4.6 billion years. Mm -hmm. And what's happened, and this is a, a, the result of these models, predicting okay. how the luminosity, the radius, and the temperature of the sun change with time. Okay. And what you can see the models predict very early on luminosity is dropping and that's simply because in the very early stages nuclear fusion hasn't started yet what's happening is the sun is just being powered by shrinkage so it's turned from this the protoplanetary disk which has started to form this stuff is now shrinking the sun into a star yeah the old thing kelvin thought yeah. it could be powered by shrinkage and that did actually work for the first few million years well and that's what we estimated that the sun only lasted a few million yeah. years early on and then to begin with it would have been less luminous Temperature would have been slightly lower, but not much different. The sun would have been smaller and a bit less radi uh, a bit less luminous. And so the sun would have been, what's that, about 25-30% um, less power than it puts out today. So it would so, have been a cold early sun. So a cold early sun right before it starts ki kicking on this nuclear fusion. Well, the fusion starts and it will slowly increase the brightness. What's basically happening is, this, as the remember that the fusion in the centre mm -hmm. is supported by the weight of everything pressing down yep. from the outside. And how much it presses down will depend a bit on the gravity of the core. If the yep. core has more gravity, that'll pull, pull the outer yep. layers more and allow you to burn faster. Yep. And so as you accumulate more helium, the core is getting denser. Yep. And as it gets denser, you're pulling more. Pulling stuff in, so the fusion rate goes up a bit. So it's kind of like running from a slow start, right? You're running a race, you don't all of a sudden just start running really fast. You take a few seconds to get going. And in this case, yes. millions of years. Yeah. So basically, as the amount of helium starts piling up in the core, the core gets denser. Yep. And as it gets torque denser, the nuclear fusion works a bit faster. And so the sun steadily increases in brightness. So you're creating more nuclear fusion and that's creating more energy and therefore the brightness that we see. This is actually a puzzle because it's telling us that the sun would have been considerably less luminous for four billion years in the yeah. past. Um, but for example, we know that Mars was warmer back then than it is now. That's Mars true. used to have water. Yep. So how come it had a colder sun? It should be even more frozen than it is now, but actually it was warmer. Okay. Likewise, the Earth. I and mean, you might imagine the Earth, the 25% less sun would be a, a ball of ice. And, um, so in fact, probably something was going on in the planets. They'll talk about this in the planets course. Yep. There must have been some mega greenhouse effect early on to allow them to stay warm enough that you could have had oceans and evolution of life. Um, and then the sun gets brighter and brighter, which is its current luminosity today, by definition. So it's, ch so it's changed, but I guess, you know, as you said, about 25, 30%. Over four and a half billion, 4.6 billion years, that's not a lot. True. And it's going to keep on getting brighter. And this is probably going to spell bad news for the Earth. Yeah, it kind of seems like it, doesn't it? So, I mean, we talk about global warming. This is on a much, 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 much longer time scale. Because we're talking about billions of years here. We're going from 4.6 to 12 billion years. Yes, so you have to bear in mind that the entirety of human life is, thick, is thinner than this yes. line over here. Um, but a couple of billion years in the future, I and mean, bear in mind a couple of billion years in the past, your ancestor and mine were bacteria. That's right. So... Does it really matter to us at this point? I mean, imagine someone that's as much more advanced than us than we are than bacteria. Um, but a couple of billion years, the temperature will get hot enough that we expect the oceans on the Earth to boil. Yeah, because again, in about two billion years, there's another 20% brighter 
than it is today. Yes, and that's enough to boil the oceans of the earth. So, but who knows, our very incredibly advanced ancestors might well be able to put up They're sunshades or sunblock on the right. earth. And so the other thing is, I guess I notice is the sun is slowly increasing in size as well. Yes, um, again, this is, uh, the radius is increasing by quite a small amount, yep. so 20, 30%, so it's not gonna engulf the planets. Yep. But you can see that as you get to 10, 11, 12 billion years, we're now starting to get maybe up to double its current luminosity. Yeah, it kind of starts to go off the charts. It really starts slow, but really starts to pick up, as you said, around 10 billion years. And that's when the core is starting to be mostly helium. Oh, okay. 